This is serious. Let's get serious. Hi, I'm Ben Lloyd Hughes. I play Alexander Colvin in Sanderton, and I am here to rate period drama heartthrobs uh, for BuzzFeed UK, aka Career Suicide. Thank you. This is just the characters, not the actors. It's but no, it's both. It's, oh, it's both. It's whatever you want it to be. And can I just ask quickly, um, how do you feel about Sanderton coming to an end? It's uh, it's very poignant and. Um, emotional and uh kind of surreal it's one of those when you know something's come to an end you're kind of reluctant to watch that the kind of final bit and the final episode because you know that when when you do that's it um and so because it came out in america first and now it's uh in the uk it's been nice that it can be slightly drawn out and everyone can appreciate it in different times but um i'll always be really really fond of the job and everything it meant and, and the character and, and the people so it's more a, a kind of smile because it happened rather than cry because it's over let's crack on with this because i'm excited to know um what you rank these people as richard armitage as mr thornton in north and south so for my sins i've never seen north and south i'm only vaguely aware of it and um, so, he, so I guess you want me to rank it. I'm going to put him bottom out of the one per the one I've seen. Aidan Turner as Ross Poldark. In Poldark, what a hunk! And uh, I never really watched Poldark, but I'm aware of the same. Uh, we filmed a lot of the same things uh, in Bristol there, uh, especially the all the scenes that you see in Sanderton series two and three with the balls where he's in the same uh, location that pulled up a lot of things, so, and the tea house. Um, and uh, who, who doesn't like his brooding eyebrows? Okay, I'm gonna put him 12 then. <laughs> uh, Henry Lloyd Hughes as Ralph Whelan in Indian Summers. Uh, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, performance and a fantastic guy so um, that would have to be I suppose uh, we'll go number one I suppose Ooh, okay. I feel like a, I feel like a professional gun is to my head so thank you for this experience uh, Reggae Jean Page is Simon Bassett and Bridgerton again I think this says a lot about actually how infrequently I watch certain uh, television shows because you get to a certain stage depressingly where you've either uh, auditioned for it, read the scripts, know all the actors, um, know the writers and you've seen behind the magician's curtain so to speak so you're just aware of uh, it, it's hard to escape it's hard you just think about your work a lot when you watch um, especially British TV so sometimes that's why I just watch a lot of sport or documentaries. Um, so I have watched the first episode of Bridgerton, but um, he hadn't arrived yet when I watched, when I, whenever I switched off. So uh, he has to go low as well, just for, by virtue of never seen it. So he's going in 11. So <laughs> Sam Hewen as Jamie McKenzie Fraser in Outlander. Again, never seen it. Um, and, uh, but he is uh, got another hunk. There's a lot of hunks you're throwing my way. It's uh, it's a real who's who of hunks. So I'm going to, what did I put the last one, 11? 11. He's gonna be 10. <laughs> I love that you're just counting down, literally just putting them in. What did you expect? Order. What did you expect, right? <laughs> Not this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Colin Firth as Fitzwilliam Darcy in Pride and Prejudice. I did watch this. I'd never seen it before and I'd heard how good it was. And when I got the role of Sanderton in the Sanderton, I I made sure I watched this as um, as the kind of gold standard bearer for a lot of people of, of Jane Austen adaptations. And I'm glad I did. I thought it was really, really well done. And again, Andrew Davis, who was involved in Sanderton, and I thought Colin Firth uh, was superb. He uh, he was really, really good, I thought, as Mr. Darcy and very, 
un vain. And I have to say that in all the nicest ways, I think um, he was able to be a hunk without there being this uh, body dysmorphic uh, interpretation of a period drama hunk that he has to be six packed and ripped and muscly. Um, and like he's been to the gym uh, at 4 a.m. every day, which uh, I think a lot of the hunks that you've sent my way so far have had that pressure probably um, placed upon them either subconsciously or consciously. So uh, that's why they're low down, because I, I think that loses a huge amount of, re amount of realism personally. Not to say that um, Ross Poldark you know, couldn't have been uh, ripped from all the physical activity he was doing early in the morning uh, in the hay with Theresa May or in the, the wheat fields. But uh, I don't think any exercise of that era would have made him look like that. So I'm going to put Colin Firth as number two, just below um, my brother for obviously diplomatic reasons. Is it fair to say that Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy was a little bit of like research for you then for the role? I certainly saw a lot of Mr. Darcy in uh, in Alexander Colburn, and I don't think there's anything to apologise for that because it, so much of Sanderton, especially the second series and third, is based on Jane Austen tropes that we know and love. And Jane Austen herself was kind of always writing novels that were troping her, troping her own themes. And uh, but what was great about Colburn was there was certainly huge dollops of, of Darcy, but also uh, themes of a lot of other of you know um, Jane Austen's heroes and so I could kind of pick and choose which bits I liked but Colin Firth in Darcy uh, his performance and I think just him as an actor uh, the way he goes about his business everything I've heard about him I've never met him but um, I was aware of his existence from a young age and he he kind of lived roughly in the same area he lived right next door to a, a friend of mine growing up. So I used to look through the windows in my friend's house and kind of um, in, envision becoming friends with Colin Firth as a kid, which sounds weird. But here I am playing a, a, an odd, bizarre game talking about him. <laughs> Sharpe is Mr. Jeremy Malcolm and Mr. Malcolm's List. Never seen it. And there's a theme here. Uh, uh, I do know Sharpe though, uh, we've We've met many times through uh, various connections and he's a lovely guy. And um, uh, I, I, can you ask, do you, how often does he have to get his top off and how uh, ripped is he in, the sh in this film? I actually don't know. <laughs> okay, so you've never seen it either. You're just throwing curveballs at me. Uh, I know him, therefore I'll put him at a very respectable uh, number three, Henry Cavill as Charles Brandon in The Tudors. I'm going, I'm sure he is a fantastic, uh, inspiring, lovely human, but again, uh, for body dysmorphic reasons, I'm going to put him uh, near the bottom. So wherever we're at, where are we at? 10. So 10 is available. He can go 10, yeah. Anyone super ripped, you're going down. Is it a uh, is it like a slight competition thing? It's just like it's probably subconsciously because they make me feel sub uh, self conscious from, about my body, and it's probably a conscious thing that uh, the more ripped other actors are, I feel like there's an expectation that everyone else has to be so. So I resent that professionally. I I honestly think that's completely fair. Tom Hardy as Heathcliff in Wuthering Heights. Um. I did, I think I did see this. I think I did see this. Maybe not the whole thing, but I was aware of it. I think I auditioned for it, not to play Heathcliff, but as a young actor, I think I auditioned to play, um, I see a character called Linton, a kind of young Weasley um, skinny boy. Uh, so that was me. I, uh, I suppose he probably, does he get his kit off? Is he ripped? I mean, he doesn't he doesn't get his kit off that much, but it is Tom Hardy, so yeah. It is Tom Hardy, so by default, uh, do I put him in the top half? Or the, maybe I'll put him... Uh, I mean, it's a great role. I went to the cinema and, and saw the uh, Andrea Arnold version of the film. Have you seen that? Yes. Um, so that... 
I really enjoyed moments of that as well. Um, and there were there were kind of it, this was a more like uh, period TV version, which was less I, I suppose like gritty. The, the Andrea Arnold version, you could really kind of feel the wind in your face. And I remember mm. Lady Macbeth then kind of took that and extended it. If you've seen that, but um, on that basis, because I've seen uh, potentially a, a Wuthering Heights that I enjoyed more, although Tom Hardy is a fantastic actor, obviously. I'm going to put him at eight. I'd like to hear your list after this. It's only oh, okay. <laughs> I'll share it with you. On the spot. Right, next. Dan Stevens as Matthew Crawley in Downton Abbey. Good one. Never watched Downton Abbey, but... Uh, I hate period drama, Ben. I hate myself, <laughs> and I hate what I do. Do I hate period drama? No, I... I love period drama, but like like I've already, there's so much to watch. There's so much content, uh, TV and film, that I think especially TV series, that's why I'm probably more likely to watch a film because you feel like you don't have to dedicate your life to it. And especially when one's personal life starts to become uh, very busy for var various kind of familial reasons, um, one one has much less time in the day to sit down with a glass of wine, Sam. That's and so, uh, although having said that, it, you know, when Downton Abbey came out, I was at a different stage of my life. But I didn't really properly watch it. But um, to all extents and purposes, he didn't have any six packs in this, uh, as far as I know. Which so that's a that's a thumbs up from me for the lack of of six pack. Sadly, Dan then has gone down the Hollywood angle of being very ripped and um, potentially only drinking um, smoothies all day. So that's a thumbs down. But uh, I do think he seems like a very good actor and a lovely guy. Um, and there's no six packs in this specific role. So that's going to be higher. We'll, we'll put him at seven. Dev Patel as David Copperfield in the personal history of David Copperfield. I really liked this. I, I thought the film was fantastic. Amanda Amanda Inucci is um, such a legend and a genius, and I thought the performances were brilliant, and his take on it was brilliant. Dev was fantastic, and it was one of those films that had come very hyped before I saw it, and then I saw it, and it still lived up to the hype, which is very rare. Again, it's a film which we can tell there's a theme here. I like. I haven't sat through eight episodes of it. It was done in 90 minutes and I really enjoyed the world of it. And I know Dev from back in the day in Skins. And he was such a lovely... Of course, yeah. Did you actually, you've, you've met on set and... Yeah, so the, the backstory of Skins back in the day, I mean, who this quiz is going down so many tangents, who cares? Uh, no, I like it. I also, I remember, I remember you in Skins, of course. Yeah, of course. But um, here's another uh, chip to add to all the chips on my shoulder is that I was down for the last two to be the main guy, uh, Tony, that Nicholas Holt got. And then uh, they obviously gave it to Nicholas Holt in the end and I was gutted as a young 17, 18 year old actor leaving school. But then they wrote this part in it for me, so I still got to be in it, which was super exciting. So I still got to... And Dev was at the the workshops, the like final round screen test chemistry bits. I was the only Tony there. Nicholas Hart was clearly too busy and successful to show up. So I, everyone was telling me, you're the only Tony here, man. Like, see you on set. And Dev was there and completely just like out of school, never acted before, pretty much like all of us. And he was just this ball of amazing energy and charisma and then after the show i bumped into him uh in a building called spotlight which is where a lot of auditions happen i don't know if you know that building in london and we bumped into it on the stairs and we caught up and, and i said what are you doing here today at spotlight like, oh i just had this audition um it's like a recall it's really good uh for this uh like do you know Danny Boyle? And I was like, ah, I don't really know who you're talking about. He's like, it's amazing. It's called Slumdog Millionaire. It's like, oh man, I hope I get it. And I was thinking, yeah, good luck, Dev. Like, sure, whatever. See you, mate. You're not going to get it. Um, because obviously, odds are no actor ever gets any role they audition for. And then I watched him like at the Oscars uh, and killing it for the rest of his life. So well done him. He was right. Uh, and uh, that's why he's going in at number three. 
No, no, you've got Chopin in number three. So. Okay, well, he's at, uh, Deb's at number four. Sean Bean is Richard Sharp and Sharp. I feel like I have Sean Bean's voice constantly in my head from all the voiceover he, voiceovers he's done. I'm a fan of him as an actor. Loved him in GoldenEye, which is one of my favourite kids films as a kid. There's also the quite chilling as an actor anecdote of Paul McGann being sharp and then breaking his leg playing football and then um, losing the role, obviously, and but getting, it was like one of the biggest insurance payouts at the time. Have you heard this? I've never heard that, but that is, that's why you never play football, I guess. So. Well, every time I play football, I think, fuck. Um, and I probably shouldn't sit, even say out loud for insurance purposes that I ever do play football. And um, he, I think then Sean Bean got the role because of that and, and look at him. He looks great. As far as I know, because it was a different era, era there was no gym, protein shakes, um, steroid injections or uh, body dysmorphia six packs. So I'm going to put him vaguely high. I'm going to put him at number six. Theo James as Sidney Parker in Sanderton. What, Sam, what are you doing? I had to. Uh, I've, I've worked with Theo, he's a lovely guy. I really, um, I really enjoy working with him and uh, I wish him nothing but the best. I never, I think for the right reasons, watched the first series of Sanderson because of, uh, although Rose always used to take the piss out of me for having no idea what show I was on uh, and probably never reading the scripts. Uh, I just knew that if I watched it, it would affect me either way. Either I'd try and recreate what he did or, or do the complete opposite, which wouldn't be helpful. So I'm unaware. I know that he did get his kit off and that he is very in very good shape. And so that's the thumbs down on the body dysmorphia scale. Yeah. But again, there's the uh, nepotistic scale that we're aware of, that he's someone I know and is a friend and I like. So though you're putting two, a bit like shopping, I guess, you're putting two, two in contrast. And uh, certainly, diplomatically, he's going to have to go really high. So... Um, probably one under my brother so we're gonna have to budge everyone down there oh okay all right that's that's fun for me admin wise <laughs> oh actually no we don't need to do that because i don't think anyone will, will really care or watch this or begrudge me so what what spaces do we have available we have four no four is available four's got four is dev five is available all right let's chuck him in at five There's two tens. Oh, there's two tens. Okay, well, you're going to have to make a call on that then. So we've got Sam Hewan as number 10 and Henry Cavill as number 10. Um, apropos of nothing, but I hear Sam Hewan is a really lovely guy. I'm sure they're both lovely guys, but I have it on good authority that Sam Hewan's a lovely guy. We're going to put him at nine. I just want to say for the record that my version of this is just the reverse for the exact same reasons. So <laughs> just so you know. Okay. I'm such I'm, a cliche. Actually, actually, do you know what? I feel really guilty that I put Richard Armitage at number 13 now because I didn't quite understand what the hell the game was. And certainly I don't think there was any uh, body dysmorphic six packs. Well, well, here's my question to you. Now you've got this list, would you make any changes? Yes. I'm gonna have to make some changes. We're gonna have to bring Richard Armitage up and we're gonna put Richard Armitage at, uh, at eight and knock everyone down. So Tom Hardy will be nine, uh, Sam Hugh will be 10, et cetera, et cetera. Is that the only change? I never watched Bridget and Sam. You're going to have to tell me, does uh, does he get his kit off and is he in fantastic shape? I think you know that he does. I genuinely wasn't <laughs> sure. I know that there's sexy bits. Yes. Uh, nibbly bits. Um, and I know Jonathan Bailey is in fantastic shape, oh. um, which is... Oh. Love my life. Good for him. Uh, two thumbs down for me, and so uh, and you're you're in great shape. What are you talking about? You look great. Bless you, Sam. Bless you, my son. And uh, this feels like a, a kind of confessional now in like a, a Catholic church. Uh, I I think I'm in very good shape, thanks. But I certainly um, I think 
just worry about the future. This is serious. Let's get serious. This <laughs> feels like we're on Loose Women. Like we're all having a laugh, but no, seriously. <laughs> uh, if in our period dramas where gyms and weights didn't exist, we are now used to a male body image. And I'm not saying that there's any, uh, I, I'm aware of the huge irony that female actresses, actors have had the body pressure and looks pressure for years and years, which has been hugely unfair. Um, but we're getting to a stage where male actors now, just to potentially be normal, have to be in incredible shape. And I don't know what that incredible shape is personally, because I would have thought even if you were hugely athletic in that period, you were horse riding, you were running and jumping and in the farm, you're not going to have huge muscles necessarily. You might look hugely athletic, but it wouldn't be, I don't know. Um, it wouldn't be the, uh, the type of look that you can only get by waking up at four in the morning with a personal trainer and depriving yourself of uh, certain foods and whatever. And, and I think uh, even James Bond, who I love, if you're going to be James Bond, does James Bond have time to go to the gym? Probably not. But he is doing a lot of exercise. But I think we've just got to be careful because what image, a bit like Love Island, what, what message are we giving our future uh, generations? And so for those reasons, that's my list. Tune in next week um, as I uh, give you another rant about another uh, <laughs> acting industry uh, pandemic. I, I honestly really rate that. I think that's really fair and um, very, very cool of you to say. My last question for you is, where would you put Coburn in this list? Oof. Um, well, obviously I've been watching series three and uh, normally the things I watch uh, that I'm in, I, I really, the first time I watch, I have to kind of really watch them through my fingers because I'm cringing so hard. And yes, I'm cringing, but I'm really proud at the same time of my performance and all the work that I and a lot of people put in. And that's actually really rare that I'll watch something for the first time and immediately be proud of it. Normally it's a kind of second watch. And so I think that's a really good sign. So where would I put myself? In my head, I'm thinking very high, but because this is being recorded and I'm a humble guy, <laughs> it has to be number 14. God, I just, oh, me? Shucks, number 14. Let me say Coburn, number one. There you uh, go. I've said it now, so. Sam, I really pr appreciate that, but I also don't believe, from everything you've said in this conversation about <laughs> your life, why would my non six pack body be uh, at the top of your list? Just don't believe it, but thank uh, you anyway. Okay, all right. Well, I was serious, but sure. Okay, good. Then will I accept it? Oh, please, come <laughs> Sam, don't turn off the Zoom. Um, one last thing, someone on Twitter, because I, because of my our in, my interview with you guys, by the way, yeah. all my Twitter is just Sanditon. <laughs> really? It's mad. Um, no, they want to know about So Long Marion. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. That's a really good question. And uh, I think it's pronounced So Long Marianne. It hasn't been properly announced. So I don't know how they got that information. That's um okay uh, well, we could we could we don't have to talk about that that's no well i i don't think anyone cares uh it's one of those things that it only hasn't been announced just because um i'm not a big enough name so i it's a tv drama all about leonard cohen and we filmed it on the real greek island in uh in greece that uh leonard cohen lived for a certain period of years and uh i don't know if you know the actor alex wolf he plays leonard cohen and it's all about his relationship with a uh, Norwegian girl called Marianne, who he then later writes the famous song about. And I play Alan Ginsberg. I don't know if you know anything about Alan Ginsberg. Oh my God, that's sick. Are you aware of who Alan Ginsberg is? Of course, yeah, I love Alan Ginsberg. He doesn't have a six pack, so I'm just not sure if that's... Oh, right, yeah, no. Right. Just in my head. Um, but some would probably argue I, I'm in too good shape uh, to play Alan Ginsberg, but I had a great time and it was a fantastic team of people. And um, yeah, it was a real highlight of the job. I had a big fake beard and, um, you know, I went full 
Ginsburg, and I'm really looking forward to it coming out. I would say you are way too roguishly handsome to be Anna Ginsberg. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And um, that is the transformation that I can do. I could be... Um, that was, I think, the years of frustration as an actor is that I'm potentially not good looking enough to be the leading man and not quite ugly enough to be the character actors. So I'm like lost in between. Um, so hopefully I can still play some kind of role in something. Did you do a New Jersey accent? I mean, I'm guessing. Yeah, I did an American accent. I, I just, I, hey, I did my American, man. It wasn't British. It, I wasn't doing RP. <laughs> <laughs> Although some people might say I was without really. Oh my God, I can't wait for this. This is great. It's going to be really good. Um, it's, yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Amazing. All right, well, I've taken up enough of your time, but thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Cheers, Sam, anytime.